Good morning, guys. It's Ryan here, broadcasting live from Space Wolf Research. Gotta be honest with you, it's been an interesting uh, couple of weeks up here. There's been a lot of interesting things that have taken place both on camera and off camera. And speaking of cameras, installed a camera last night, believe it or not, by this morning it had been, uh, well, rendered useless. It had literally had uh, things stripped out of it, um, screws undone, uh, completely worthless. So uh, in interesting stuff just goes with the territory. Um, found that with some other interesting devices that we used out here. Uh, we used some Paranologies equipment, which is like ghost hunting equipment or whatever, trans, you know, uh, communication equipment um, that that is uh, electronic in nature. And you find that a lot of the things that are utilized that are electronic in nature have a tendency to go down. They have a tendency to not work the way they are supposed to work or just be disrupted completely and rendered useless. Um, it's pretty nippy out here today. Uh, chilly one. It's a chilly one. So um, I was going to have the hood on, but it's a little bit excessive and extreme. But, you know, winter is coming. Fall is definitely here. If uh, I th It's one of my favorite times of the year to be up here. We've got Sam Hain coming here in just a couple of weeks. We have all kinds of esoteric and occult significance to that. The leaves changing up here are just stunning, as you can see in the background. They're just, it's, it's a bomb time of year to, to come up. And um, the cold can be way, way useful uh, in using certain technologies, especially thermal. Um, it's, it seems like it's, it, it expands by 10 times, you know, how well it works. When it gets just a little bit colder, you're able to see even little pot guts, marmots, jackrabbits in the distance where you would otherwise, um, every, everything is just more difficult to see. But thermal works so much better when it gets just a little bit colder like it is right now. And, uh, and it's a good time of year to, to investigate in my opinion. Also, we've had what's basically a new moon we're just coming off of it and that is one of the indicators i know that you guys are always asking like what indicators out here lend towards better investigations that's one of the indicators if you come out super dark nights like a new moon you have a tendency to be able to see more both in the sky and also on the ground, there are ground-based lights out here, uh, you know, that can be anywhere from seven to 20 feet. Uh, some are lower even, but most are in that seven to 20 feet range, 12 being the average. But uh, yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff about the fall. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, keep you updated with things that go on in the winter, even though that's more difficult. Winter has a lot to offer as well, because in the winter time, you're able to do a lot more uh, cryptozoological investigations. Trackways are a lot more evident because when it's snowing, you have a lot more ability to like see what's going on on the ground, like what's moving, where it's going, what it's doing. But it's been very cool, um, lots of activity, and uh, it's a great time of year to be up here. Um, I will be doing a very interesting podcast with Jeff Rennell on eTalk.tv and I'm going to be going into detail on some of the things that we encountered out here. One of the more interesting, and I know I touched on it very, very, very quickly, was excavation. Excavation done out here at night while I was here. Uh, didn't hear, didn't see a thing. It actually happened, in my opinion, I hope. It happened when I left the property for about 45 minutes. Um, a large trackway, 24 feet, uh, and uh, got deep as 18 inches in parts. And it, it's it's really strange. A long trackway, about 24 feet, about 18 inches deep in some parts. And, oh, I don't know, about a foot wide, maybe a little more. It, very strange, very strange. No footprints around it, no vehicle prints around it 
and it looks like a mini X or an excavator came out and did it. But most importantly is that it wasn't so much of the dirt. The dirt was moved aside, but they were after rocks. Whatever, whatever they were after seemed to be at the end of the trackway and the dirt was moved. I don't even know how you would mechanically do this. The dirt was moved aside. Something seemed to have come through and sifted through and pulled out these white rocks that I'll post some images of and then broken up some of the rocks, um, almost like, you know, checking them for something. Really interesting. Uh, and I think there might be more to it than I even I suspect. There seems to be a lot to the geology out here. You can find all kinds of things out here, as many of you know. Everything from uh, interesting metals, old coins, strange rocks, you name it. Uh, it's out here and the Uinta Basin is known for that. There's silver, there's gold, there's there's all kinds of unique elements. Gilsonite is um, something that's very interesting that runs in the veins underneath the Uinta Basin of Utah, specifically south of 40. And this Gilsonite is an amazing material. It's only, it's it, this is the only place it's found in the world really. And it's basically the, the, the closest, it's a black goo, uh, almost like an asphalt or a tar that you can literally put on a parking lot and you're done. You don't have to, there's no curing process. There's, you know, there's none of this stuff that you have to do with the asphalt where you have to like all the prep work. No, the Gilsonite's ready to go, wham, bam, parking lot. Um, but they use it for other things as well. But this is one of the only places where it's found in the world. And if not the only place. And the interesting thing about Gilsonite is some of the veins are hard to explain like how they run they go vertically they go horizontally i've been talking with the expert into this stuff and he's shown me some of these veins and how they work and how 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 how, how crazy it is the geology out here as you know we we did have a couple cracks open up while i've been out here but not huge ones um i've told you about the cracks in the earth where the earth will literally open up and sometimes it'll go down up to 50 feet but uh this time we haven't had any huge ones. We've had some small ones open up, nothing nothing significant, nothing to really write home about or document. And, uh, and I'll, but when we do, when we do have some of these big cracks open up, I will definitely document that and show you what they look like because they are fascinating. And um, I'll, I'll hopefully even run down the, uh, run, run the, the camera down, run the uh, fiber optics down there because that's a pretty neat little toy we have now too, where you can run this fiber optic line down into some of these bigger holes or areas where you can't get to and obviously uh, see it on the screen above. And uh, there's been a lot of helicopter activity, but not necessarily that of neighbors or people that have helicopters. It seems to be helicopters of a different variety. So I'm going to get into that as well with Jeff Rennell. That podcast will be happening later this week. I will drop the info to you guys as soon as I know. I believe it's going to be, if I'm not mistaken. Well, anyway, let me get the exact info and I'll drop it to you. But keep an eye out for that. Jeff Rennell at etalk.tv. And uh, interestingly, there's been a lot of cool stuff in the fall in the basin as usual beautiful time of year if um if you want to get away from the crowds and you know you don't want to deal with like all, all the usual weekend warriors this is a great time of year to come out and go camping but it is cold so bundle up until next time keep your eyes to the skies feet on the ground but don't forget to take a look around <laughs>